right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar with the fabulous organization Kids for Peace. Today we're going to learn all about a program called the Peace Pledge, uh, which is an excellent opportunity for those of you who have maybe tried out the Great Kindness Challenge from um, Kids for Peace, which you, if you follow us, you might have seen some webinars on before. Um, and if you loved it, then this is a great extension. Or for those of you who are new to this space and you're really just looking to bring something fresh to your classroom in the coming school year, it's an excellent activity to teach your students about compassion and empathy, global awareness, and to supplement any of the social and emotional learning programs that you guys already have going, uh, which is really exciting because I know that a lot of you guys are looking to really strengthen the SEL supports in your school, so this is a, a great flavor to add. Um, before we get started, I do want to give you a quick overview of the platform that we'll be using today so that you can navigate all the tools and the resources that are available to you. So on the right side of the screen, you're going to see our slides right now. It's just that intro slide. Um, we're going to be progressing through those shortly. Now below that, you're going to see a Q&A box. That's a great place to put any technical questions that you might have, any issues that you're having, or to ask any questions that you want to keep private because those questions that you input into that box are not visible to the group. Then on the left-hand side, below that Kids for Peace logo, you're going to see the chat box. And the chat box is a really great place to introduce yourself to us, to the speakers, to your fellow attendees, or to ask questions that you are okay with having public, because everybody can see what's placed into that box. In terms of questions, please feel free to ask them at any time during the presentation. Just type them in as, as they come up. We're going to be keeping track, and then we'll address all of those questions verbally at the end of the webinar. Lastly, I want to point out our handout section, which you can find at the top of the screen along that string of icons at the very top. You're going to want to look for the one that looks like a stack of papers or documents. And when you click on that, you're going to find two handouts to download. One is a Kids for Peace program flyer, and the other one is a white paper on social and emotional learning that's been crafted by some of my colleagues at McGraw-Hill, um, Applied Learning Scientists. It's been really helpful for teachers who are looking to apply SEL in the classroom. So with that, I just want to quickly introduce our speakers whose names you can see at the bottom of the slide. Uh, we're going to be hearing from Jill McManigal, who is the co-founder of Kids for Peace, Meg Jansen, who is the Peace Pledge Program Director, and two wonderful educators um, who have had some first-hand experience with the pledge, uh, Ray and Megan. So thank you all for being here, attendees and speakers. I'm so excited. And Jill, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Fantastic. Sarah, thank you so much. Um, we just love partnering with McGraw-Hill and your support of students and their whole selves is so, um, so impressive and we're just so grateful to be able to um, be, be in this sphere with you. So thank you very much. And we'll jump right into what the goals of this webinar are. Um, our goals are, we first of all want you to learn about our Peace Pledge program and how it can be implemented in a classroom, a club, a school-wide, or as an after-school program. So we'll really let you know how you can bring this to your school in whatever format best suits your students. And we want you to walk away with a clear vision of how you can empower your students to become service-oriented, globally-minded peace builders. The agenda for this um, webinar is we're going to um, share about Kids for Peace and let you know about our programs, um, get into our Peace Pledge, what that is, talk more about the types of programs, um, types of chapters that we have as part of the Peace Pledge program, and then let you really see what that looks like. We'll give you lots of examples of how the Peace Pledge can be put into action. We're going to talk about youth empowerment and then the social emotional learning, how this really addresses that. And then we'll give you some of the information of how to start your own chapter and the resources that are available to you. And then we'll jump into your questions and give you lots of good answers. So Kids for Peace is a global nonprofit. Um, we have um, chapters in over six continents, not over six continents. We have chapters in six continents. We're working for that seventh, but not quite yet. We reached into Antarctica. Um, our mission is that we empower kids to create peace through hands-on service, global friendships, and thoughtful acts of kindness. Um, kids for Peace did start 13 years ago. Um, I am the co-founder, and I started it with an amazing high school student, Danielle Graham. Um, she's in the center of that picture with two, two children on her lap. Um, we started because we were inspired by a quote by Gandhi that says, if we, are, if we wish to create lasting peace, we must begin with the children. And with that spirit, we gathered um, some of the children, including my own two kids, 
Um, I am a former school teacher. I am a mother. And it was post 9-11, and there was um, fear in the world. And we wanted just to be a place of action and a place of love and a place of, um, a place of hope for our kids. So in that spirit, we started Kids for Peace. And 13 years later, we've expanded to now engage over 13 million kids in, as we saw, six continents, working on Antarctica for that seventh one. So most of you probably know us through the Great Kindness Challenge. We now have two programs. It's the Great Kindness Challenge um, that is implemented by schools. And this last year, we had over 13 million students participate in 24,000 schools. And it's all about creating um, a culture of kindness. Um, then our other program that a lot of people are now learning about is our Peace Pledge program. And that's a chapter-based program. And we have chapters in both um, schools and in neighborhoods. And we have over 450 chapters that have been launched since Kids for Peace started. And it's now for, um, it's for children, um, we now say toddlers to teens. Our chapters are across the age span, and it's for boys and girls both. It's all socioeconomic backgrounds, and it's for kids everywhere. So the Peace Pledge program overall is free, it's easy, it's adaptable and scalable. So whether you are a preschool um, educators or high school educators, it's suitable for your students. It's community focused. We really focus on the service aspect of it and really honoring and serving the communities. It's global. We want our students to know that they are global citizens. We really focus on that. It's holistic. We look at the whole um, approach to service and the whole approach to peace building. It's student driven. And this is one of the um, really important aspects of the Great Kindness, I mean, excuse me, aspects of, well, the Great Kindness Challenge too, but aspects of the Peace Pledge program is it puts the students in the lead, letting them decide what's important to them and then supporting them in making that happen. Um, it's experiential, so it's all about action. Um, we don't do a lot of talking in this program. It really is about doing and having the students be the doers. And it's very joyful, and we always focus on the joy that service and connection can bring. And um, we're very proud and happy to have those be the aspects of the Peace Pledge program. The youth of um, the the youth that are part of Kids for Peace, they they serve their communities. They're global citizens. They have enhanced empathy and compassion. They're engaged civic citizens. They're socially conscious leaders. They have high self esteem and confidence. They practice kindness, they're environmental stewards, and they acquire peace building skills as they put the words of the Peace Pledge into action. So the Peace Pledge, we've said that word many times already, but you may be wondering what the Peace Pledge is. And I'm gonna share that with you. I want you to know that these words were created by kids. They, they created it for themselves and they created it for the whole world. And so we're actually gonna share the, share the Peace Pledge with you right now with all, all that are in our room. So we always put our peace fingers up. So wherever you are, if you want to put the peace fingers up, please do. And ready, begin. I pledge to use my words to speak in a kind way. I pledge to help others as I go throughout my day. I pledge to care for our earth with my healing heart and hands. I pledge to respect people in each and every land. I pledge to join together as we unite the big and small. I pledge to do my part to create peace for one and all. That's the Peace Pledge. <laughs> yes. So our Peace Pledge program itself, it is chapter-based, and the, it's um, personally meaningful, and it's cultur culturally relevant. So it's all about students taking each line of that Peace Pledge and putting it into action. And we have chapters all over the world. We have chapters in Kenya and Pakistan and Iraq and, and Australia and China and India, throughout the United States, Canada, Mexico, you know, chapters all over. And students take each line and they find a way to make it personally meaningful and culturally relevant and they create activities around that. So it's a very simple concept, um, it's a simple curriculum that we have, but it's all based on those words of the Peace Pledge. So we have two types of chapters. We have um, chapters that you can find in schools, which we um, imagine is mostly we're speaking to educators, and those can be school-wide chapters, classroom chapters, lunch club chapters, or after-school chapters. 
So I've seen the iterations of all of those. Um, so that's what we'll, we can help you to find out what's the best fit for your school. Then we also have neighborhood chapters and community chapters. And those are either the neighborhood chapters that um, are run by volunteer adults with the kids, or they can be affiliate chapters, such as Boy Scouts or um, YMCA's after school programs. So we really help design whatever is the best fit for your school and for your community. Um, we're going to get into the, the Peace Pledge and show you what it can actually look like. And joining me today, I'm so um, excited to have our Peace Pledge Program Director, um, Meg Jansen. And she's also a, she started out as a volunteer chapter leader at her children's school at Hope Elementary. And so she's going to be able to share some examples. So Meg will say hello. Hello. <laughs> and then I'm also here with, um, with Megan Kim and Ray Merritt. Megan is a parent volunteer, and she's a speech and language pathologist. And Ray Merritt is a second grade teacher. Megan's going to say hello. Hello. And hello from Ray. And they are the chapter leaders at Jefferson Elementary. Um, Jefferson Elementary is actually the first um, Kids for Peace school that we've had, first chapters there. And so Jefferson has been, um, has examples of almost every type of chapter throughout the years. They have been a full school chapter, they have a lunch club, they have an after school and a classroom. So you're going to hear a lot from um, Jefferson Elementary. And for full disclosure, for full disclosure, we also have um, that, excuse me, for full disclosure, my children went to Jefferson Elementary. So I started out as a volunteer Kids for Peace chapter leader before it really became the full global nonprofit that it is. So you'll hear a lot from Jefferson. So hearing um, what we're going to do for each of the lines of the Peace Pledge is we're going to share what the line is, and we're each going to give examples of how we implement that line of the Peace Pledge. So some examples so you can really see what that can look like at your school. So the first line of the Peace Pledge is, I pledge to use my words to speak in a kind way. And some of the projects we've done overall, there's one called the Peace of My Heart Project, where students cut out hearts and they write positive messages on the hearts and they give those hearts out. Another one is positive public speaking. We give our students a lot of opportunities to go out um, either at their school or out in public showing signs of gratitude or having um, different community events that we give them the skills and the practice to communicate positively. And that photo that's there was our students will often go to city council meetings and say thank you for all that the city provides. We also then um, notes of gratitude and there's a lot of written, written um, positivity as part of this line. Meg is going to share what um, Hope is Elementary, how they have used their kind words during the Great Kindness Challenge. Thank you, Jill. Well, I first want to start out by saying how humbled I am to be in the company of so many wonderful educators. I have an enormous amount of respect for the work you do, and I'm so grateful for your time and your interest in Kids for Peace and our Peace Pledge program. It's Teacher Appreciation Week for us here, so I hope our gratitude and love for you all is felt throughout our time together today. Using uh, our words to speak in a kind way, I feel like we put this line of the Peace Pledge into action with just about everything that we do. Uh, but the example we have featured here from Hope is how we use our words to speak in a kind way during the Great Kindness Challenge. It's most definitely my favorite week of the entire school year. Some of you have hopefully experienced it at your schools, and I'm guessing you would agree with me that dedicating a week of consciously being kind to one another is brilliant. And I can say that because it wasn't my idea. <laughs> uh, it just lifts the spirits of everyone, the students, the teachers, the staff, and even the parents. It's really pretty awesome. You'll see members from our chapter here using their words in a kind way by conducting a student-led kickoff assembly. So Monday morning of that week, they rally the student body to get excited about all the things that they're going to do that week. And they do a big school-wide cheer, you know, give me a K, give me a K, give me a K, give me an I, I, and they spell out Kindness Matters. Um, it's so fun. And during the week, members will also host kindness stations during recess and lunch to help students check off kind acts from their checklist. Uh, you'll get, you'll see, we have cute little Lexi here. She's using her words in a kind way to make a wish for a child in another country. We have a little wishing well there on campus that the kids can drop their wishes into and it's so cute they get so serious and close their eyes and put their wishes in um, but it's a great way for kids to open their minds and their hearts to think about 
kids outside of their own circle of friends at school. And then backing up in the weeks leading to Great Kindness Challenge, there's some preparation that uh, happens first. Our chapter typically meets once a month, but in January, we always have at least two meetings to get ready for that big week. Part of the preparation includes um, putting together some teacher kindness kits. Our kids will write kind messages on folders or bags for the teachers that are filled with information about what to expect that week and some extra goodies, a kindness rock, a kind bar, et cetera. Kids also uh, make and display Kindness Matters signs and post them up all over campus. And we create uh, school-to-school posters where kids can make and hang posters for um, the schools, other schools within the district, wishing them a happy Great Kindness Challenge week. Uh, there's so many ways to incorporate kind words into Great Kindness Challenge, and we keep getting more and more ideas every year because of brilliant educators like yourselves who are constantly thinking of new and fun, creative ways to celebrate kindness. So speaking of kind, er, 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 brilliant educators, I'll hand it back to Jill. Thank you, Liz. If we do find that um, schools that have Kids for Peace chapters are the ones who are often implementing the Great Kindness Challenge at their school, and then the students really get to take a lead in that. I know that's been big at Jefferson mm -hmm. also, so we're excited about that. Um, another way that, um, that Jefferson puts the the kind words into action is a project that they call the power of positive words. Um, the students will really focus on their I am statements and they all um, come up with one of what they call their power word and they make a banner that they keep up all year that says like I am powerful, I am kind, I am confident, I am loving, whatever their power word is and then they refer back to that all the time just knowing that they're, how powerful words are for themselves. And then they focus and throughout the year on what those kind words can be and how it affects not only themselves, but, their, but others as well. So those kind of examples um, are in our curriculum that we provide to all those who signed up for the Peace Pledge program. Um, moving to the next line of the Peace Pledge is I pledge to help others as I go throughout my day. So service is a big, big part of the Peace Pledge program. Um, we have one that's called Helping Hands, and they find out ways to support the community. That's a food drive that we see in the first and the left hand, um, the left hand picture. Then we have the Kind Coins campaign, where students will help other kids around the world, help them by getting a new school or a new uh, playground. Um, now we're doing the Kind Coins for Liberia, where they're getting a new health clinic in Liberia. Uh, we have another project called Flip Flops for Friends, where students will get flip flops and decorate them and give them to children who don't have any shoes. So those are some examples holistically of what the, um, how they put their, how they help others as they grow, go throughout the day. And Meg will share that part that they did. Yes. So at Hope, at the beginning of the um, school year, we asked the kids what they want to see change in the world. And this particular year was there was an overwhelming response to help the homeless. In San Diego, with such beautiful weather, we have a large homeless population, and kids recognize that and are so compassionate. La Posada is a local men's shelter that not only provides food and a place to stay, but also helps the residents become independent by providing tools like money management and language instruction. Um, and so we talked about different homeless organizations with the kids and agreed that La Posada was a worthy organization to support. So we brainstormed different ways we could help them and landed on making sack lunches for them. We decorated the bags with pictures and again, using our kind words, we um, wrote kind messages and dropped little notes of love and support um, into the bags and filled them with a sandwich and chips and an orange and water, um, we brought them to the shelter and the kids were able to hand deliver the lunches. I wish I had words to explain the look of gratitude on the men's faces. Uh, a couple of them I remember were in tears and just knowing that people, especially kids, were thinking about them and cared enough to come visit them, it was so special. And many of the kids said that that year that was their favorite project and um it was just so powerful so. beautiful and Met, excuse me megan is going to be sharing about the backpacks for kenya project they did we had an organization donate backpacks to our school at the beginning of a school year 
And there were many left over at the time. So our school um, was supporting Kids for Peace and the Kind Coins for Kenya to help build a preschool in Kenya at, at the same time. So our group thought it would be nice to send the backpacks to Kenya filled with school supplies. So we asked for a donation of school supplies, and the children wrote kind notes on hearts for each one. Uh, we also laminated miniature peace pledges that we attached to the backpacks. And the children especially enjoyed the day we were able to pack the backpacks and send them to the Kids for Peace headquarters, uh, where um, Jill and her team took them on their next trip to, uh, to Kenya. And following their trip, Jill shared pictures of uh, all our new friends in Kenya smiling with the backpacks that the children had filled. And that was um, the huge delight for our children to see it come full circle so that all their actions and thoughts um, brought smiles to our new friends in Kenya. Beautiful. And that, has, that is one big part about Kids for Peace projects is we like to make sure that full circle happens. Um, we know that, that it has extra meaning when the students can really see the impact that they've had. So we take great care in making sure that that happens for all the projects that we do. And that moves us to our next line of the Peace Pledge, which is I pledge to care for our earth with my healing heart and hands. Um, just a little history with when the kids were first creating the Peace Pledge 13 years ago, um, my adult mind didn't think that we would have something about the earth in uh, in the Peace Pledge because I was thinking of a peace. I didn't put it all together. And when I kind of pushed back on the kids, like, are you sure you want this? They looked at me as if I was just from another planet. They're like, Miss Jill, how can we have peace if we don't have an earth to have peace on? Like they insisted that the line of the peace pledge um, included caring for our earth. So um, just the, the wisdom of the kids is, is fully in every piece of Kids for Peace. So we do all kinds of projects for the earth. Um, uh, the easiest one and maybe the most important is the, are the campus, park, and beach cleanups that we, we do. And those happen all over the world. Um, another really sweet project is the Recy Recycle Toy Project, where um, toys for animals, and um, they've taken recycle, pro um, recycle items for that. And then we've done uh, some different Going Green awareness campaigns, where the kids will learn about a, a certain issue, and they go on and actually advocate for that. Um, this was a partnership from the bottom right-hand corner with Greenpeace, and the kids got out and did a rally for um, uh, an issue that was going on at the time in, this was also in San Diego. So Meg's gonna talk about one of their um, projects for caring for the earth. Thank you, Jill. Um, so at Hope, um, this project stemmed from the kids recognizing how much trash is constantly floating around our own school campus. Our lunchroom is outside, so wrappers go flying and make their way into every nook and cranny. So once a month, a group of our mem members will get together before school and pick up trash around the campus for about a half an hour. And it's amazing how much trash they collect. They proudly wear their Kids for Peace shirts and welcome any student to help them clean up. We end up getting several kids who aren't even chapter members to chip in. So it's a great collaborative event. We just put buckets and gloves outside of the school gates and invite the whole school community to participate. We've been doing this once a month for the last few years, and it's become a regular reminder and a practice in mindfulness as well as self and social awareness of what we do with our trash and where it goes. It's spurred subsequent con conversations about how much waste we produce individually and how we can reduce the amount of waste um, that we create. And of course, we use our kind words to, uh, to uh, acknowledge our, and show our custodians some love um, for the hard work that they do to keep our campus clean. So in this picture, you see we have a, a big poster that all the kids had signed, um, and it really means a lot to the custodial staff to be recognized and appreciated by the kids. Um, this has been a great project, not just for our chapter members, but for the whole student body. Beautiful. And Megan gets to talk about uh, beach cleanup. Thank you. At uh, Jefferson, we have the pleasure of being located walking distance to the ocean, and so consequently, consequently, excuse me, the ocean is a big part of our group's lives and their academic curriculum. So um, bringing the children down there gives them some ownership and also an awareness of um, the amount of trash that can accumulate. So um, while the beach was easily accessible for our group, the same could be done in, in locations that uh, any chapter's children feel are important, including uh, their parks, their neighborhoods. So 
um, it's amazing the, the locations the children can come up with when they're asked about their opinion. Beautiful. I love that. Our next line is, I pledge to respect people in each and every land. And so many opportunities to show respect to each other and to other cultures. And one of our biggest initial projects is called the Peace Pack Project. So kids would learn about it, um, children in another culture, and then they would actually make um, these peace packs filled with school supplies and toiletries and toys, a note of friendship. And on each peace pack, each knapsack, the students would put a wish on there as they painted their handprint, and they would infuse it, that peace pack with their love and their all best intentions for the child in another part of the world who is going to receive that. The peace packs have gone all over the world, and we, we help um, our different chapters to make that connection and get those peace packs delivered. Um, we've also done peacemaker pen pals, so you can write to kids in other parts of the world. And um, one of our chapters in Kansas, um, a great chapter there, they've done a customs and traditions around the world where they put on a little festival where they either honor their own um, culture and their own heritage or other heritages and learn about that from the child's perspective. Um, Meg's going to share about their peace pack for Uganda. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so um, just like Jill had mentioned, we did uh, peace packs for our chapter in Kampala, Uganda. Uh, Jill had mentioned this project in the previous slide. For Kampala, these peace packs were full of school supplies. Every Several of their chapter members didn't have the supplies required to attend school. So our chapter families got together to, and collected donated backpacks and pens, pencils, crayons, and notebooks and um, to send to Kampala so that those kids could go to school. Uh, conversation around that was pretty impactful, thinking about how sometimes we don't even want to go to school, but how these kids don't have the opportunity. It's such a neat project because there are so many ways you can engage the kids. Here we had some students introduce our new friends from Uganda showing images that had been posted on Facebook. These boys also took the chapter through um, a fact sheet telling them all about the climate and the culture, food, music. Uh, when they were done with the presentation, they transformed into game show hosts and we played Kids for Peace Feud, a kind of ironic name, but loosely based on the game show Family Feud. The kids uh, formed two lines um, for opposing teams and the host would ask a question that kids would run to the center and try and hit the taboo buzzer first to, um, to be able to answer it. But there was lots of laughter, uh, but also amazing to see how much the kids learned from that, present, from that presentation. Uh, after that, the kids listened to African drums, and we colored Ugandan flags, and uh, then together put the peace packs, um, assembled those. We used our words to speak in a kind way once again by writing little notes for each of our new friends as a happy surprise in every backpack. And you can see from the picture at the bottom in the middle there, that each backpack was sealed with love with that painted handprint and um, was each member made a, a wish for a child, the child who would receive that backpack. So the supplies were mindfully packed with their intention to help those children receive the education that they deserve. Beautiful. And Jefferson, uh, I'm gonna to speak to this one. We, uh, we really try to give kids the opportunity to meet people from other cultures. Um, in the United States, we're such a richly diverse culture here. And so being able to tap into different guests that are visiting or just um, people who've moved here from other cultures, we really try to give the opportunity, opportunity to honor those cultures. And um, in this case, we had a visitor from Pakistan um, and she was visiting right before Malala actually was shot and um, like days before, days before. And um, the kids were so, um, they were so moved by the whole experience and they really then had this deeper connection to what happened with Malala. But we had this beautiful guest speaker, um, her name was Rubina, who shared all about the culture. And then our kids um, made some hearts, um, our, the Peace of My Heart project to give back to Pakistan. Um, I actually had the opportunity to travel there with my daughter to go visit the school because we were going to visit Pakistan because we were going to be do, building the school there. So we were able to tie all of these connections together. So the children at Jefferson made the sign and the hearts, and then we were able to hand deliver them. So after they got to meet Rubina, they got to hear about the culture, then they made the hearts, they made signs, 
those were taken and then we um, delivered them to Pakistan, brought back the photos for the children at Jefferson and they were just so in awe seeing that the sign that they had made made it into the hands of the kids in Pakistan, seeing that their hearts were in the hands of the children in Pakistan. And they just felt um, not only connected to this other culture, but they really felt um, this deep sense of of, um, of joy from knowing that they were able to make friends in this way. And I know that um, Meg, uh, Megan has a, a sweet story about that too, about the impact of those hearts. Yes, my um, our chapter had before Jilla had gone to Liberia because we're um, going to be building a health clinic in Liberia. This. We're in the process of, of doing that. Um, we had sent a um, piece of my heart project. Our chapter had done one. And my son uh, recognized that his heart was in, was being held by Solomon, the kind of the spokes kid for our, um, our video that was created. And he just thought that was the coolest thing. It was almost as if it was a, you know, a famous person was holding something that he had created, and um, it was just so special. And a lot of our kids recognized throughout that video their hearts, uh, too. So it was really, really neat. Yes, and again, this is a big part of Kids for Peace is making those intimate connections and really having these opportunities for kids to see the impact that they can have and then really become conscious of their actions in everyday living. Um, so the next line is, I pledge to join together as we unite the big and small. And there's different ways that that line is interpreted by different kids. Um, one of the ways is um, through the uh, senior citizens. So we see the senior citizens as the big and the kids as the small. We have a program called the Grand Friends Project. That's being um, expanded into the Grand Friends Kindness Project, where kids will do all different kinds of activities with seniors, sharing love. Um, We've done the Unite the Big and Small through community art projects. So we'll unite with other, um, other organizations out there. So coming together and really emphasizing the importance of collaboration. And then that leads us to the collaborative service project. So we're really about um, joining other organizations. So it's not that we're trying to reinvent everything ourselves, but we want to support what's already out there and see the, the power of the collective action. So in that line of the Peace Pledge that join together, that is um, equally as important as the uniting the big and small. So it's about that um, beautiful ability to all come together. And so here for Hope Elementary's example, we, Jill said you can interpret big and small in different ways. We actually um, can interpret it also as the child with a smaller animal. And that's what we've did, done here. We um, collected toys and blankets and food for a local animal shelter. The kids love this. First of all, at the beginning of the year um, that this event took place, the kids were so passionate about expressing their love for animals and their desire to help them. So our members collected donations for the shelter through their own neighborhood drives, asking friends, promoting at school. It was a huge success. And to celebrate, you can see here we had a cute, lovable, furry little friend join us for our meeting. His name's Happy. How awesome is that? And the kids just uh, loved up on him. It was such a cool experience. Um, and when we went to the shelter to make the delivery, they were kind enough to give us, uh, give the kids a tour of the facility, explaining where the animals came from, how they're cared for, and the process for adoption. So it was a really sweet exchange of knowledge and awareness and love. Beautiful. And at Jefferson. Thank you. Over the holidays, we joined with our uh, local senior center for their holiday luncheon. And our children uh, caroled and shared holiday cards and kind hearts while the children also enjoyed talking to their new friends. Uh, we also raised funds to purchase small gifts for our homebound seniors, including soft blankets. And a retired teacher from Jefferson happened to get one of the gifts. And her husband called that afternoon to share how the gift in the card head had touched his ill wife who had now gone blind. So he was able to share um, the details of the blanket and details of the holiday card with her and the, about the sweet little girl who had made it. So it really um, touched home. Um, also, we were inspired recently by a news piece about a little girl who asked seniors in a home that her mother works at for three wishes, and she did her best to make some of those wishes come true. So
So we recently wrote letters to our homebound seniors and asked them for their wishes and um, our hope that we could fill at least one of them also. And we just got our first letter back yesterday, so we're excited to start making some wishes come true. Love that. So beautiful. And then our last line of the peace pledge is, I pledge to do my part to create peace for one and all. And the really big emphasis on that is my part. We really want this, every single child to know that they can make a difference in the world and they have a part to play. So it's a wide range of activities um, to put this into action. We have a Peace Day Challenge, which we'll talk more about. We um, have a Kids for Peace book project. The students can use um, their ideas and the word, words to create a more peaceful world. And then we have the Heart Tree Project and put using art as a way to express themselves and doing their part to create a more peaceful world. So as uh, one of our first meetings of the year, I told the kids a starfish story. I'm sure you've heard it about the boy on the beach who was picking up starfish and throwing them back in the ocean in order to save them. He was approached by an older man who had asked him what he was doing uh, because there were so many, there were millions of starfish on the beach and that he couldn't possibly make a difference. But the boy picked up a starfish, looked at it, threw it back into the ocean and said, I made a difference for that one. After I told the kids the story, we had some discussion about whether it's worth it to do any good when there's so much good that needs to be done. And, of course, these sweet kids were emphatic in their answer, yes, it's worth it. So we gave each child a little fake starfish and asked them to come to the center of the group with, uh, with a friend. And one at a time, they would drop their starfish into a bowl of water and would say out loud how they want to make a difference. So we recognized how dropping the starfish created a ripple, which is um, symbolic of how our acts can inspire other acts, um, other people to make a difference too. So it, uh, it was not only symbolic in that way, um, but also helped them realize their own power to create change. Um, it was by, because it was a, a, le a lesson in collective action and a little bit of a science lesson with the water displacement because they recognized the rising water in the bowl um, after they had all put their wish, what they were gonna, all their starfishes had been collected and what, um, how they can e make an even bigger difference when they all work together. So it's simple, but still one of our favorite projects that we've ever done. The kids really got a lot out of it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And at Jefferson, we have um, the Peace Day Challenge. And that's another um, activity that we do during the International Day of Peace, the United Nations International Day of Peace on September 21st. So sort of in the spirit of the Great Kindness Challenge, um, we have a Peace Day Challenge checklist. It's um, 50 acts of peace, and they try to do all 50 acts of peace in one day. So they're busy um, learning to speak, learning to say peace in five languages, um, having friends, um, smiling at others, they plant trees, they learn about other cultures, it's all kinds of wonderful activities that they do based on this um, Peace Day Challenge checklist. So it's all about the kids recognizing that they can take an action to create a more peaceful world. So those are some of the examples. Hopefully you have your um, imagination sparked and um, ideas are flowing of what you could potentially do at your school. And all of them, you know, we're showing the action of it. All of it is an opportunity for our students to be empowered and to really um, honor each of the individual students. Um, and youth empowerment is a big part of Kids for Peace. And we approach youth empowerment in a holistic way. And we start first by the students identifying the needs in their school, community, and world. We again want it to be personally meaningful and culturally relevant to them. So we have a, a way of going about having them identify those needs. We then have them take an active role in designing and implementing the project to address those needs that they've addressed. Um, and so then we have the, in everything that we do, we really encourage mindfulness. Um, I have my own kids and I've seen them in some service projects before, um, Kids for Peace, that they just kind of went through the motions of doing it to get it done. And we really want the kids to stop and really know what it is they're doing. You really feel the effects in their, in their heads and in their, in their hearts. And so that's a really big part that we emphasize um, in all activities that we do. We want to infuse everything with love and with purpose. 
because we know it's through that energy of love that peace becomes um, more quickly possible. We um, also really build confidence in our, in our children because we ensure that they see the full effects of their of their efforts. That we they see the full impact. So having that full circle, really closing that loop, is important in all things that we do with the kids. Because as they see that impact that they've had, um, in the case of um, Meg's son, when he saw Solomon holding his heart in Liberia, he knows, like, oh, my gosh, I am truly touching another life. And that just builds upon itself. And then finally, we have our students reflect on their impact and on the, the, lessons, like the lessons that they've learned through it all and how it made them feel. So that reflection piece is also really important to carry on the full impact of their service. In all things that we do, we um, this is all appropriate for social emotional learning. This helps to address that the, the core competencies core competencies of social emotional learning. Um, the social the social let me go back. Oops. We'll go right here. Let's get at these. Um, so there's the the core competencies, and so the way that social awareness is addressed here is that students are becoming aware that their actions impact others and they're motivated to have that positive impact. So that goes with the mindfulness part of it. And then students also have a heightened empathy and recognize when others are, they need the help. So we really have our kids see that they're, what, what is going on out there and that leads to their overall social awareness. Um, students become responsible to have responsible decision making and they do that as they identify the problems that they see in the world and they come up with the solutions and they reflect on their impact. That all helps to um, help their responsible decision making. And they build their relationship skills. And they do that through, as, as they are doing their team building activities, we have different communication exercises that we do. And as they have to work together or get to work together in their different collaborations for the civic projects. Um, they have an increased self-awareness. And that happens as students reflect on their participation and their impact. They identify their own emotions and they recognize their strengths through that. And then finally, the self-management. Um, students set collective and individual goals for their service projects. And they learn the discipline, at, they learn discipline as they follow through on their tasks. It really has that full circle. So all of those core competencies are really beautifully um, demonstrated and practiced throughout the Peace Plus program. So with all of that, you might be wondering how you can start a chapter at your school, what, do you, what you need to do that. So I'm going to now hand this over back over to Meg, our, our wonderful Peace Pledge program director. Um, when you, um, if this feels right for you in your school, you'll be working closely with Meg to bring this to your campus and to your students, and she'll walk you through all the steps and be there by your side. And, Meg will talk you through it right now. Thanks, Joe. Well, we've covered a lot of information here, but we really hope you've got a clear vision of not just what our Peace Pledge program is, but how it could actually take shape at your school and empower your students uh, to become lifelong peace builders. Starting a chapter is super easy. You just send me an email and let me know where your school is located and that you're interested in starting a chapter. I'll send you a couple of forms to complete, and you'll send them back to me. When I receive those forms in good order, I just turn around and send you a bunch of tools to get started, which leads me to the next uh, slide, our chapter leader resources. Um, all the tools you need to get started are easily accessible online. We have an informational video that takes new leaders through step-by-step -step how to set up their chapter, a comprehensive leader's manual complete with suggested meeting plans, as you see pictured here. Um, and different mo project models and so many creative ideas of how to put the lines of the Peace Pledge into action, many more than we've even gone through in this webinar. Uh, we have a workbook that um, can give leaders and students hands-on activities for each of the lines of the Peace Pledge and makes it more tangible for the kids seeing pictures of how other chapters have put those lines into action. Um, this can be used throughout the year or as a summer project for the kids to take home and work with, on with their parents. Uh, we also have a private group on Facebook where leaders can exchange ideas and share events and encourage and support one another. So thanks to so many chapter leaders over the years, we really have countless tools and resources that just continue to grow as we continue to add more and more leaders to our kids' family. 
Yes, and Meg's always available for you as well as the rest of our team. And um, we, we think of it as a family and that anyone who wants to be part of this family, we welcome you with open arms and with full support. Um, besides the all the, the wonderful resources in our um, our leaders workbook and leaders manual that we have, there's always other opportunities that we let all of our chapters know about. Um, there's a sort of magic that happens with Kids for Peace and these new opportunities are always coming about. And also um, our reach is so massive now that it seems that when an, anything big goes on in the world, we have a touch point in those places. Um, for example, with Liberia, when the Ebola crisis happened, we had chapters there, so we were able to immediately respond to that. Um, in Paradise, um, there were the big wildfires in California this year. At Paradise, we had a school um, that was part of um, Kids for Peace and the Great Kindness Challenge, and a, a school had burned down, and we were able to respond immediately to that. So we really helped to offer other peace-building opportunities through our network. Um, some other examples of those activities are um, we do an annual Peace Hero event where we honor a different person, um, a person that's, uh, that's visible in the world, and we have our kids actually vote on that Peace Hero. Um, every few years we do a Peace Pledge Tour where we actually travel with kids to places and do um, service projects and share our Peace Pledge. We've done, uh, done a Peace Pledge Tour in, in Washington, D.C., where we actually got to present on the House floor of Congress we did a peace pledge tour in New York. We got to present at the United Nations. And we did a peace pledge tour in Kansas where we got to do so many amazing service projects and learn about this beautiful city. Um, so we always have different opportunities like that, which we get to invite you to be part of. Um, we do uh, every other year now, we do a volunteer trip to Kenya. And um, we have our school there. So you're invited to come, whether adults and kids. We have had children as young as seven come to Kenya with us on that tour. Um, we do our annual Kind Coins projects. Um, this is a nice intersection of the Great Kindness Challenge and our Kids for Peace chapters. And with that project, we have built a school in Kenya, um, the Peace Center in Pakistan. And right now we're doing the Liberia Health Clinic. And um, our next project is going to be Kind Coins from Mexico. So we're excited about that. We'll be building a school and being able to actually go across the border and do a lot of different um, bridge building activities with the kids in Mexico. We have a lot of cross-chapter connections and opportunities. Meg is really um, brilliant at bringing together one chapter with another chapter, whether it's from um, an American chapter with an international chapter, or even chapters within the United States to have to do some um, collaborations. So we really like to have that interconnected aspect um, at play there. Um, another fun project, um, we did an ND500 last year, two years ago, and um, when Hurricane Harvey hit, um, we were able to respond right away by collecting underwear, lots of underwear. We got way more than underwear and socks. We got way more than 500 pairs. Um, but just as another example, when something happens in the world, we like to respond and give our, our students opportunity to have an immediate connection to that. Um, we had the kind cards for Paradise so when the school um, built out, um, burned down with the fires, we were able to do um, send immediately card. We collected um, gift cards and we made cards of support for them. Um, another cool project is we did a Guinness World Record and we collected kind-hearted handprints and we um, put up um, these kind-hearted handprints in a hospital and we had the largest collage of cutout handprints and the handprints not only were beautiful but they lifted the spirits of the students excuse me, not the students, let's the, the spirits of the patients in the hospital. And that was another uh, really amazing collective effort. We had 180,000 individual kids participate in that. So there's just lots of opportunities um, for us to all come together and show that together we are stronger and together we can make peace possible. And that leads us back to Sarah. All right, thank you, Jill and Meg and the whole team for that beautiful presentation. It's so inspiring to see these kids empowering each other to, to make the world a more peaceful place. I think us adults are pretty lucky to have them shaping our future. Um, so with that, we are gonna go ahead and then transition to the question and answer portion of our webinar.
All right. I'm going to go ahead and get us started then. So I think our first question is from Eileen from Pennsylvania. Hello, Eileen. So Eileen is wondering, and Jill, I think this would be a good one for you, um, how the Kids for Peace initiative works with No Place for Hate or a school-wide PBS initiative, or if this would take the place of those particular initiatives. That's great. Um, yes, Eileen, thanks for that question. So we're all about collaboration and cooperation. So whatever programs you already have at your school, um, we find there's ways that we can blend Kids for Peace into that. Um, we have a lot of affiliate chapters um, where they will merge the different organizations together. So that it is something that we can um, help all the schools really find the best way forward in bringing their Kids for Peace, bringing Kids for Peace into the school and finding the best way to and make it be a successful experience for all the students. I hope that awesome. answered that question. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, we can do it all. One. Yeah, for sure. So we've got some coming from the Q&A box. Um, so I have one, I think, Jill, you could probably answer this, or anyone else on the line, really. Uh, is the, key, the Peace Pledge program suitable for middle and high school students? And what are some good ways to get them engaged? Yes, it, it is. It's absolutely for all ages. Um, we've in historically our sweet spot has been the elementary age, and as those elementary kids have grown up into um, the founding kids into high school, they have found ways to make it appropriate for the high school setting as well. So there are kids for peace chapters in high schools, and um, there's different ways they can go about to make it relevant. Um, the Peace Pledge itself is relevant for all ages, so they just find activities that are, again, personally meaningful and um, appropriate for their age. And so that is a, that's applicable no matter what the age is. Um, some of our high school chapters have partnered with their um, local um, chapters with younger kids. So there's a really nice way to do some cross-age partnerships there. Um, but we absolutely find it to be appropriate for all ages, um, pre-K through high school. Awesome. Meg, I think this one might be good for you. Um, so they're asking, what's the hardest part about starting a chapter in my school? Um, what challenges should I anticipate or prepare for in doing that? Yes, thank you. That is a, that's a great question. Um, it's, we, it, we intentionally make it easy as possible, knowing how busy everyone is, especially educators. Um, but if we had to pick something, it would probably be finding the time to make peace building a, a priority. Um, being so busy um, and having so many standards to meet and get everybody caught up, I think that can be, that might be seen as difficult, but I think it's, we all agree, and that's all why we're here today, is that we know how important it really is. So. Yeah, Hopefully that sure. answers that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have another one that's similar. Um, if I start a chapter in my school, what would be my immediate first step? So just to email me and let me know that you're, that you're interested, where you're at and um, where, you know, where you're located, and um, I'll, I'll get you all set up. Just send the email and let me know. Perfect. And my, I think my contact information is on that next slide, too. So, yep. Okay. Um, let's see. We also have, how often do you lead national or global activities that my chapter can participate in as opposed to activities that I'll need to develop on my own? Yes. Um, so this is Jill again. I'll take that. Um, I love that we do have so many opportunities that are built in for our chapters to participate in if they choose. Um, there tends to be probably like two to four national and global projects per year that they can, um, any chapters could be part of. Um, one of them is the Kind Coins campaign. Um, any of our schools that do the Great Kindness Challenge probably know about the Kind Coin, kind coin campaign. That's a nice blend of both of our, both of our programs to implement that. Um, but the kids get to learn about another culture and then raise funds for that the, those kids. And that there's personal ways that they can reach out to them. Um, we're always reach, we're always traveling to all of the chapters, um, to all of excuse me, to all of the projects that we create, 
And so there's opportunities for our, our children to um, connect with the kids in these other countries that they've helped to support. Um, and then there's, with all the natural disasters that have been sort of our norm in the last several years, um, we're almost always doing something to address um, those different natural disasters. So there's always something that is a, a need, immediate need, that we help to mobilize all the kids and have the power of collective action. And then there's um, our built-in global projects that we love to include all of our Kids for Peace members in. Awesome. Um, so this one I think could be from anybody. I really like this one. So can you speak more to the role or the importance of student voice and input in the Peace Pledge program? Yeah, Meg will take that. I'll take that. Sure. Well, um, I feel like the key word in our mission statement is empower, uh, to empower, we empower kids to create peace. So every student has the power within to create positive change. Our only job is really to help them recognize that power. It's just like any other curriculum. You wouldn't just give a student the answer. You give them the tools they need to figure out the answer for themselves. So the Peace Pledge program is really no different. The student voice is everything. It builds confidence when they see what they've created on their own, and it's what really what makes them want to come back for more, which is, <laughs> which is key. This is uh, Megan, if I can speak to that too. I, I agree with you, Meg. Um, at the beginning of the year, we have uh, children. Excuse the interruption. I'm so sorry. All track team members. Oh, Megan's in a school. I'm very sorry, I'm at school. There was an important announcement. Okay, um, we have our children write down what they feel is important, what they want to accomplish, and then Ray and I take those back, and it's a true honor to uh, read the, the things that are important to them that they really feel strongly about, and it, it brings tears to your eyes. So uh, it's the children direct us in what they want guidance and support with, and then that just makes it very easy to plan and um, go out in the community and do those things. And it's, it's just amazing. I can't see enough wonderful things. That's awesome. Anybody else have anything to say about that question? Otherwise, we'll move on. This is Jill. I'll jump in, too. It is um, in our manual and the training that Meg does, is she does um, give ways to really tap into that voice. So that is a big part of starting the whole year with the students of really engaging them in that. And we help to guide all of our leaders in doing that. Yeah. Okay, so I think this one could be for Meg, potentially. Um, somebody asked, do neighborhood chapters and school chapters usually work together? Sure, I will take that. Thank you. Very good question. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say usually, but there's certainly an opportunity. That's one of the reasons I'm here is connecting our chapters both locally and globally. So um, it's a benefit of... Uh, it's also a benefit of our Facebook leaders page, the private page that I mentioned earlier, when a chapter is hosting a project and they want to invite other chapters in their surrounding area, the leader can reach out on our leaders page to gauge interest and availability. But like I said, I am, I'm here too to connect anyone that is, is hoping to get a stronger force of um, people together to do a service project or, um, or to collaborate on some sort of um, uh, activity that they uh, were hoping for a stronger presence. So, yeah, and I, I'd like to jump a little bit in that too. It's one of the things that I've seen um, that kids really love about Kids for Peace is they know that they're part of something that's bigger than themselves. And they take a lot of pride in even claiming themselves as a kid for peace, which is really powerful in itself. And then knowing that they're working with kids all over the world we're putting that exact same peace pledge into action. Um, there's something really quite profound about that unifying experience there. So that's been a really a beautiful aspect of um, being part of Kids for Peace. Great. And with that, you guys, it looks like we are pulling up at the end of the hour here. Um, so I just wanted to thank all of you, our speakers and our attendees, for um, spending some time with us today. 
Um, the Kids for Peace folks have put some information on the screen around um, questions, like contact info. So if you know you want to sign up, you can hit up Meg and, and get your chapter started at your school. Um, so thank you all for all the work that you do um, to make make your schools a more peaceful place and, and to support support your students and the children in your lives. We are we are so appreciative of you and thank you so much to our speakers today for all this wonderful information. Some of this just thank so you for having you. us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Let there be peace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>